Hey everyone, this is Roger from Almost in Full Color, and today I'm going to talk about Generation 6 of the consoles. This is the PS2, GameCube, the original Xbox, and uh, people put the Dreamcast in this, and this makes a little sense. But anyways, uh, the game I'm going to focus is a game that I've played a lot. Uh, if you know me, I like MMA a lot, and Japan MMA is something that stands out, especially around these holiday times. Uh, so I actually had a Pride FC game growing up. Uh, this was in 2003 when the game was released. And let's get into the gameplay. Alright, so do note during this one, the other ones I was actually playing the game and talking. Uh, this one I'm just watching a recording I did earlier. Um, I had a different plan for these originally and I decided to change them up. So apologies there, but luckily I record this enough where I probably don't remember the matches too well. Uh, this game didn't have a lot of features to it. Uh, it was basically the Grand Prix in one match. Uh, it had a decent selection of fighters, as you could see. Um, Dan Henderson being one of the famous and Gary Goodrich from this area. Some of y'all probably don't remember these names or don't even know these people. Sorry about that. Uh, but if you're a big Pride fan, you're probably screaming at the names right now of back in the day. Sakuraba's in here, of course. Uh, couldn't have a Pride game without him. Ken Shamrock was in this. Um, there was a question of why some people were included and not included. Around this time, you did have Anderson Silva and uh, Rampage kind of fighting, and they're not in this game. Uh, we had Ninja Rua um, and then Vanderlei Silva here also. So a decent selection of players, and they were all playable at the beginning. So anyways, back to the matches while I was talking about... Uh, you have a survival also, which is great, but pretty much you just fight. There's no story mode. You can create a fighter. I actually never really did that. I kind of like Grand Prix. Japan MMA was big on this Grand Prix. Uh, they would either take two nights. Uh, they used to do one night and changed it to two, but you would have to fight either... Uh, this is 16, man, so they used to do two nights where you fought two rounds one night, and then maybe a couple months down the road, you fight the last two rounds. Uh, so it was always intriguing to watch this. Uh, early MMA in the U.S. followed this, but they actually still do this in Japan. Tournament style. It's usually 8-man instead of 16. But it was also great. Uh, if you do want to watch Pr Pride, watch the Bushido series. Uh, that's a lot of the lightweight tournaments, and they're actually really good. Um, so this had the classic uh, Pride FC intro. And if you ever watch Japan MMA, they are big on their introductions. Uh, this will be kind of lower during the gameplay because they actually did use actual video. Um, I'm fine as Dan Henderson now, but there is some other copyrighted music. But one of the big draws here in Japan, and they were big on this game of keeping, is the introductions. Uh, they are a little lengthy. Uh, so if you not a fan of this sorry i'm not going to show you them every time so just want to talk about for this first one but it was historic here um i don't think i ever watched a pride event where they had this elevator mechanism so uh to give a recap of the holidays of uh, i've been watching japan mma for probably since like 09 i did miss the pride dates i've watched a lot of old dvds of it uh, but ever since like 2009, 2010, uh, I've been watching the New Year Eve special. Around this time, Japan always has this big MMA event, and it's no different uh, this time around for 2018. We have a big fight coming up in Japan with Ryzen 14, which would be really good. So this is appropriate time to talk about that along with this game history because it Around December, I think of a lot of this, and I usually pull out this game. I still got the PS2, uh, play a couple matches just to kind of get excited and built up for Japan. They didn't make any other Pride games. They didn't incorporate it in UFC Undisputed 3. So along this, this was just a huge uh, kind of memory lane thing for me to watch. Uh, so we got the second opponent I'm fighting here. Metzer. And one fun fact, the I'm going to take Joe Rogan's quote, the crazy pride lady that does all the announcements did the uh, voices in the game also. So that 
gives you a real authentic feel back then um and then i'm gonna show this one introduction so again don't worry about it i know this is gonna be a little of a slower start but we have dan henderson guy metzer Try and knock out all my fighting history and try to get back to the games during these intros. So, uh, we got different rules in Japan. The first round was always 10 minutes, then the second, third was five minutes. Um, so that was kind of good. Uh, made it exciting. The first minute was very long and it affected the last two rounds. Famous touch. So this game played with just the uh, face buttons. You didn't use any of the top triggers. Uh, so it was a lot of just combos here. And you can tell health is going fast. This was made as an arcade game. It wasn't really simulation per se. You can get knocked out in like one second. If you get a lucky punch in, your character will go down. Uh, so it was interesting there. Um, I was trying to do some grapples there. It didn't work too well. And I lost my first match. As you can see, matches could go very quick. Uh, this was a fun party game for us. We used to play it at my friend's house because you could do that. We would set each other up on different parts of the tournament and see if we could even make it to each other. That was even uh, suspect there sometimes. We would end up doing that and not even fight each other at the end. Uh, generally, we would watch the computer fight the final if none of us made it. But yeah, this made it a fun party game. It was quick to learn. Like I said, it was the uh, face buttons. So it made it fun. Um, I'm going to restart here. And try to be better at this game. A uh, couple jabs, just easy to make it go through. Uh, anyways, this generation of consoles was uh really interesting to me i think this is where i picked up gaming a lot more i played the nintendo super nintendo kind of took a little break on them uh the ps1 was fun but i didn't play it as much as i did the ps2 uh oh i thought i almost got the choke there but uh the ps2 introduced me to uh a lot more of the foreign games and indie games uh Again, I mentioned in another video, we didn't really get imports like that much. They were kind of hard to find. Not many people talked about them. We're starting to get into the internet age now where most people had internet. Uh, I think I had a computer finally for like three years at this point. So it was kind of still hard to find stuff. But uh, the PS2, some of my favorite games. I love Shadow of the Colossus. That's part of my intro. Uh, that came from this era. Um, and just a lot of finding indie games were fun here. Uh, I didn't get a GameCube. I had an Xbox, the original, purely Halo. Um, so I didn't get attached to that either. The Dreamcast, I had a few games. So they were all sports. Um, but the PS2 was the console to play during this generation, in my opinion. Uh, I felt like a lot of the fighting games started coming out a little more. Um, I know I picked up the SmackDown series a lot during this time, so it was a lot of wrestling and combat games for me at this point. Um, I was not the big Mortal Kombat fighter, though. Um, other games I had on here was I was starting to get back into the RPGs. I started playing a lot longer there. So this was the console that was, I think, really formed me as a gamer. Uh, this is where I was picking up all these long games. Uh, to go back to the fight now, we made it past the first round. Obviously, that did not take 10 minutes, so speed is increased here. So, if you thought those were going to be long fights, no. Again, this is kind of more on the arcade field. Uh, our health bars did not regenerate much during that break. Uh, so, as you can tell, there's two bars. You kind of have a stamina bar in your health. Um, and that could affect a lot. You're very weak if you lose a lot of stamina. I got tackled again. And I got the choke out. That quickly. And then here I'm going to simulate through the rest. You can watch all the computer things. Uh, also, we, me and my friends, we would kind of place bets on each other. 
Uh, once we got of age, we would kind of do like drinks for whoever you thought would win and stuff like that. Uh, so Royce Gracie in here, he was on the left side. Uh, he was the best character in the game. We actually banned people from being him. Uh, and you'll see why during this gameplay. So this is the second round. Dan Henderson uh, goes. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I was never good at pronouncing his name. And if you notice, I had low health starting this round. Whatever health you had. So this game made the Grand Prix one night. Basically, they were simulating you had to fight four times to win. So if you had a bad round, like I kind of had a little rough one the first uh, match, you're going to feel that punishment throughout. Where uh, my opponent almost had a full bar, so he must have just went through the other guy. So it's like, oh, crap. And this game was pretty flexible. For only having really four buttons and then the D-pad, you could switch through all these ground moves. Um, a lot of it was hitting like uh, triangle X to do certain things. Uh, takedown is XO. Um, and the, each character did have some combos. I didn't know Dan Henderson's. But now you can see my opponent is pretty much done with this energy bar and there you go so up next i'm going to be fighting uh dan uh, not dan henderson i am dan henderson royce gracie uh so this is where you're going to see where his style came in into this game one thing i forgot to mention you have fighting styles in this game so you're going to see me as a wrestler and then a jiu-jitsu guy for gracie uh these are your special abilities kind of and we'll skip through this and now we are loading to the fight. Uh, so that means Royce Gracie's character is very good at submissions. And back in Pride, you were allowed to fight with whatever. So you could fight with the Gi. And right now, Royce Gracie's hurt. So happy. But now we go down to the takedown. And Royce is going to pummel me. I uh, try to get him in the choke. And he arm bars me and wins. That is why Royce Gracie was an insane character in this game. Uh, he reverses a lot more than all the other characters. And it just seems like once you get caught in that submission, it's over. So we're going to retry this again. And lose again. <laughs> so... You have to be careful here. And here I'm going to be more careful and try to catch him hurt now. You can see I'm going, uh, saw blood going for it. Very reckless right now. And you can tell just the Royce Gracie character compared to the other ones was just reversing and would just grapple you all the time. And then I got him in a choke. That would have been... If that happened back then, that would have been insane to see Dan Henderson do that. Uh, so, just a little more background. Dan Henderson was a wrestler, but he was known for his uh, right-hand power. So now we got past the hardest character on three fights. So to go over uh, some of the New Year's Eve fight, uh, it's something I do every New Year's Eve. Wake up 2, 3 in the morning. And watch some Japan MMA. That's usually when it comes on live. Uh, no time delay for it. And it's a fun time. I actually got a couple friends into it over the past couple years. And I think they are slowly getting addicted to that. Uh, some of the people from Almost in Full Color actually watch it now. So here you saw I had a little nice uppercut grab. I was trying to figure out how to do that again because I was it confused me. Nice little jab. And he ducked out. Uh, almost got the leg lock. And yeah, during that, five minutes went past. Uh, that's just how quick the time is. 
again i did like it just to play at bring this game to a friend's house and you could just play there's no unlocking players um and i think that's the style they were going for on here this was made by thq who made a lot of the good wrestling games and there we go finally got the leg lock and you get the celebration you won you have won the grand prix i'm gonna redo this and play as one of my favorite fighters back from this genre who won a lot and that was vanderlei silva uh he was famous for his knockouts there he knocked out rampage twice in pride but rampage got his revenge back so and the first fight here is i fight ken shamrock let's go first round we're gonna see if i can get through this without losing like i did with dan henderson um he got me with a nice kick and he is just lighting me up uh so the ps2 did have a lot of series that uh i was fond of i liked kingdom hearts not as much as terry on this channel but that was one of the games i played a lot um again i was kind of racing games of so need for speed was uh, still being played during this time uh this was when we were kind of when i got introduced to uh grand theft auto series they were very popular on the ps2 i just realized it was that long ago for like san andres and all uh so now i got mount here beating up ken shamrock um i'm pretty sure i'm missing a lot of series like i said shadow colossus was the big introduction i think that was the first japan game i got um and ground and pound won for me with vanderlei silva uh so you can tell a different style dan henderson was marked as wrestling i didn't have as much punching power here once i got mount it was ken shamrock couldn't do nothing so it's very good to know your opponent's uh fighting style in this so now i get to fight the character i was at the first time i played the grand prix so this will be interesting all right so now we're ready to fight uh dan henderson had a little struggle i'm glad i got to keep most of my health so that would be good got some jabs going and then you can see i was starting to do some of vanderlei's combos there you can saw i did like a jab and then there was a jab to a knee uh that knee was pretty vicious back in the day um and you can see i kind of got dan henderson trapped in the corner and the leg kick knocked him out so you can tell i'm going through people a lot faster with this striker um just more power behind his attacks the other thing the ps2 did mark for me was this was the first game console i had internet with uh you hooked up your dial dial up to a special internet uh box you could buy that would fit on the back of the ps2 so now i'm fighting nagara uh he had a lot of famous fights in this time too uh he was very popular and he actually had a pretty good success in the ufc once ufc bought pride all right so nagara was hurt very bad in the third round so let's try to finish him early here still fighting figuring out vanderlei's combos And got him with the knee instead of the leg kick. Wanted to vary it up. So anyways, the box for the internet you could buy on the PS2 was there. And I had SOCOM. And I used to play that horrible lag. Uh, it was rough to navigate. You were trying to talk to people. It was not playable. It was kind of scary to even think that that's how we play games online back then um i wish i could have known the ping right just to tell you because it had to be in, like triple digits all the time but it would introduce me i was able to talk to people in socom and really got into online gaming starting there i got the xbox the original xbox later uh before i could really enjoy that so as you could probably see the name while i was describing that experience got stuck with royce gracie imagine that uh, in the final so we're going to show this. Vanderlei Silva was famous for doing that move there before each fight. And there's Evil Gracie in this game. Um, so far, I haven't lost, so that was good. A uh, way better start than the first match. So yeah, the PS2 lasted a while for me. It was just a console. I think even when... Uh, because I bought a Xbox 360 when the next generations came out. Uh, I still was actually playing the PS2. 
Uh, there was a lot of games I was finding that I missed out on to enjoy. So overall, this was probably one of my top consoles uh, throughout my lifetime. Uh, so Gracie was hurt. Thank you. Oh, got out of that submission. So yeah, Vanderlei was probably the second uh, character that was probably overpowered. And I'm going to skip this because this went on for way too long. And he got me in a triangle and tapped me out. So close to actually getting the victory. Um, and this was another thing that we always did to like make the game harder was see how far we can get in a single run without losing. Uh, it's just Gracie's just so hard to beat on the ground. Well, I'll see if I can beat him once to try to finish up this video here. We're back in here. So Gracie, yeah, he's going to lay on the ground. I did like that blood splatter that they added in the effect on this game. He tried two submissions. I got out. He tried a, tri arm, a triangle, sorry, and then Kimura. I got mount and knocked him out. Thank you. Gosh, I hated fighting Gracie in this game. Again, huge celebration for winning. It was awesome feeling. Um, and you kind of got this too when you fought through that. Uh, again, you could kind of restart, which feels cheap if... It didn't feel that special, but if you tried to do it and not lose, it was fun to just hit this point. Anyways, that's while he's celebrating. That pretty much wrapped it up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this game. Always watch some old Pride fights if you get a chance. They're entertaining to me. Um, if you're an MMA fan, you'll like that. But this is Roger from Almost in Full Color. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel.